In this example, we want to find the interval of convergence for the given series. Okay, so the series that we have here is actually um, it's for the function e to the x. To under so to understand this, okay, uh, recall that the McLaurin polynomial for e to the x, okay, it's going to look like this. So if we expand it out for for the first few terms, we get one plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial, which is 2, plus x to the power 3 over 3 factorial, and so on. Okay. All right. So we can actually uh, express this in the form of a series. Okay. All right. So e to the x, okay, we can bring, we can, in, we, we can add we can continue to add terms. So then this e to the x, this function, can be expressed as an infinite series. Starting from 0, okay, into infinity, right, of, okay, x to the n over n factorial, okay? So it turns out this series is for e to the x, okay? So the question here is, we do we want to know for which x values will this series converge for, okay? So to, to find out, uh, to find the solution for this, uh, we're going to go back to the idea of using the ratio, the uh, ratio test, okay, for series. Okay, so we're going to take the limit as x approaches infinity, okay, of a sub n plus 1 divided by a sub n, okay? So this is the, right, so this is using the ratio test. Okay, so in our case, it's the nth term, okay, is going to be x to the n, right, over n factorial. And then the nth plus 1 term is x to the nth plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Okay, so, and this limit, this is n approaches infinity, sorry. So this is going to be limit as n approaches infinity, not x. Okay, so this is going to be, okay, x to the n plus 1 all over n plus 1 factorial, okay, and then We'll go ahead and take the reciprocal here. So we're going to have n factorial over x to the n. Okay. So now, okay, we're going to get, right, so we don't have any negative values here. So I'm just going to change these to, well, actually, no, I'm going to keep the absolute values. Actually, we have to be careful here. Okay, so we have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n times n factorial over n plus 1 factorial, okay? Okay, all right, so this is going to reduce to, okay, so using some algebra here, uh, we have x to the n plus, to the power n plus 1, okay, so that's going to give us x to the n times x. So we can cancel out x to the n. So that's going to leave us with an x in the numerator. And then over here, okay, we're going to have n factorial over n plus 1 factorial. Okay. So recall, okay, uh, n factorial over n plus 1 factorial, okay. So we did this in another video, okay. So this is going to leave you with 1 over n plus 1, okay. All right. Okay, so since this limit depends on n, it doesn't depend on x, so we can bring the x out. Okay, so we're going to have the absolute, we take the absolute value of x outside the limit, so that leaves us with the limit of 1 over n plus 1. So I don't need, the, we don't need the absolute value around the, uh, around 1 over n plus 1, because n is going from 0 to infinity. Okay, so then, okay, the limit of this regardless of what x is, it's going to be 0 as n approaches infinity, okay? 
All right. So that means, okay, you applying the conclusion for the ratio test. So this is less than one. Okay. Right. This is less than one. Okay. For all x. All right. So that means it's going to converge over the entire interval. Okay. So therefore the series okay so we had x to the n over n factorial converges from minus infinity to infinity so it converges for all of x okay all right, and so this tells us the radius, okay? So the radius of convergence is infinite. Okay. All right, so that means for any x we pick in here, for any x we pick in the interval, we put it back into the series, the series will converge. That's what this means. Okay, so sometimes we, this is, or you can think of this as the domain for the series. Okay, okay, in this case, it's valid for all x. Okay.